and uh, see more details about uh, Exadata database machine. We'll start with understanding the versions of Exadata, then see more details about Exadata. As with any other software, as with any other system, Exadata has a different versions. It all started in the year 2008 where the first version was released. So then onwards, almost every year, Oracle is releasing a new version. Okay? So the latest version is released in January 2016, just 8 months back. And the latest version is called X6. X6. The first version is called V1, released in 2008. So exactly 8 years back, first version was released. And now we have 7 versions in the market released. Okay? And if you see, version 1, version 2, the nomenclature is V1 and V2. But from version 3, the nomenclature has changed to X. Okay, instead of V, Oracle started using X. So the third version is called X2. Fourth version is called X3. Fifth version X4. Sixth version X5. Seventh version X6. Okay. So because X is... Yes, yes. That is correct to say. Uh, in terms of certification, though new version is released, Oracle University is not uh, upgraded to the latest version. So they still offer certification on X5. Okay? But with X6 training, okay, whatever training we are going to see now, it is, uh, okay, with that you can go for lower version training. With X6, you can easily pass X5. Okay, but with X5, you cannot pass X6. Right? Yeah. Sure. So that is the first thing you need to understand. V1, V2, then onwards X. Because X is most prominent in Exa data. Okay? Exa. X. Then Oracle says Exa data is extreme performance. Again X. So everywhere X, X, X. Okay. So that way Oracle started using the X notation. Then. So seven versions are on the ground now. Right. In the field now. So what is the difference between each version? Or before that, if you see this diagram, if you see this slide, V1, I am showing you in a different color, black color, remaining all in different colors, okay? Uh, there is a difference between first version and the remaining versions. The first version, which is V1, <coughs> the hardware was HP hardware. The servers are HP server, not the Sun servers, okay? So initially, Oracle started this with uh, collaboration from HP. So at that time, Oracle doesn't have hardware business. Oracle had only software. So for a hardware, they had to collaborate with uh, HP. So all the servers are HP servers and all the software are Oracle software. Later, so that's why initial uh, the name was, okay, HP Oracle or Oracle HP Exadata Database Machine. Later, Oracle uh, acquired Sun Microsystems. With that, Oracle also got <coughs> hardware business as well as operating system business. Because Sun was, uh, okay, uh, familiar, right? Uh, famous for hardware and uh, operating systems and uh, even storage and uh, okay all these devices. So with that, 
Oracle also has hardware business and operating system business in the form of Sun Solaris. So, in the second version, Oracle started using Sun hardware instead of HP hardware. Okay, so that is the difference. In version 1, the hardware is HP hardware. From version 2 onwards, the hardware is Sun hardware. So all the servers inside the database machine are Sun servers. Okay, Sun Fire series servers. So that is the major difference okay, uh, between version 1 and uh, remaining versions. Apart from this, what is the change between each version? Suppose if you take uh, V1 and V2, okay, we know V1 has HP hardware, V2 has Sun hardware. Is that the only change? Right? No, there are many other changes. The changes are both in terms of hardware capacity as well as software features. Okay, this slide shows you hardware related changes. Again, different uh, dimensions. For example, disk storage. How the disk storage increased uh, from version to version. Similarly, flash storage. How it uh, changed uh, among all the versions. CPUs. Okay, memory. So, if you see disk storage. In version 1, you used to get 168 terabytes per rack. Okay? Whereas in version 2, the capacity has been increased to 336 terabyte. And in version 3, it is increased to 504 terabytes. In the latest version, it is 1344 terabytes. 1344 terabytes. So that way, in each version, the system capacity is increasing in terms of storage, in terms of memory, in terms of CPUs. So today's system, right, is much more powerful than earlier systems. For example, if you compare the X6 system, which is the latest version, with the V1 system, which is the first version, okay? So its capacity is much, much higher compared to version 1 system, V1 system. Correct. As, see, there is one, uh, uh, okay, caveat in this, you need to understand. Uh, as the server capacity increases, especially the CPUs, right, your licensing cost also goes up. Because uh, software licensing is based on the CPUs. Though user-based license is also there, but the CPU-based license is the more common licensing method. So, as the number of CPUs are increasing, you need to pay for more CPU, right, licensing cost. Of course, there is some flexibility in that. Uh, you don't need to pay for all the CPUs, okay. You can start a small and uh, as you need more processing capacity, purchase additional license for additional CPUs. Even though, suppose, even though you have, say, 500 CPUs on the box, but I will not use all the 500 CPUs for my workload processing. Okay? I want to buy licensing only for 30 CPUs. Okay? So what Oracle does is, they will disable the remaining CPUs from the BIOS. So that you can use only 30 CPUs. So today you purchase a license for 30 CPUs and run your workload. Pay for 30 CPU licensing. Now, after a few months or few years, you need more CPU because your workload increased. Now, what you can do? You enable some more CPUs. Maybe you add 10 more CPUs. So then you pay that uh, incremental fee. 
okay licensing cost for those additional 10 yes correct okay so that way a customer can start with minimal licensing fee and uh, grow big as required so this is something about uh, exadata versions also called as generations now there is some other concept called editions exadata editions under a particular version exadata is generally available in two editions okay in the form okay x suppose if you take latest uh, version x6 right under x6 you have two editions x6 to x68 okay x6 to x68 like this so these are called editions similarly if you take a uh, 5 okay x5 there are two editions under that x5 to x58 similarly if you take x4 version x4 to x48 x3 to x38 x2 to x28 so this started from x2 version actually earlier this concept was not there okay so what are these editions like uh, this is something similar to uh, if you take oracle database uh, software right the same release of the software is available in different editions enterprise edition right standard edition like so like that exadata is also available in two editions now general format is x n s where n stands for the version number or the generation number and uh, s stands for the number of cpu sockets on the database servers cpu sockets on the database servers so the difference is suppose if you take the latest version x62 x68 what is the difference between these two servers x62 server database server will have two sockets two cpu sockets whereas x68 server will have eight sockets eight sockets okay this this slide uh, shows you that in general any x8 servers okay like x68 x58 x48 x38 x28 uses eight socket smp servers instead of two socket servers in the x2 servers right and these x8 servers are suited for high end oltp workloads in memory workloads and each x8 server will have 2 terabyte ram whereas your x2 server will have less ram so some oltp applications right uh, are traditionally deployed on smp servers they require more okay uh, memory and uh, processing capacity so to run those uh, traditional workloads on exadata uh, they released uh, the x8 servers okay so it may be little bit confusing at this stage but uh, as you work more on exadata as you spend uh, uh, more time on exadata you will understand the difference it is very simple okay uh, these x8 servers has eight socket cpus x2 servers will have two socket cpus and uh, x8 servers will have two terabytes of two terabytes of memory per server 
for example, this slide uh, shows you that comparison. Okay. Now you see X62, X68. X62 has two socket CPU. X68 has eight socket CPU. Okay. Two socket CPU and eight socket CPU. Let me write that also, okay, for more clarity. Now, and another difference is um, number of CPUs for the X2 system is 44 CPUs. Whereas in X8, uh, how many you are getting? 144 CPUs per server. And uh, in X62 server, you have less memory. 256 uh, to 786 GB. Whereas in X68 system, you will have 2 terabyte to 6 terabyte. Expandable to 6 terabyte. Right? And uh, in terms of number of servers, every X2 servers, like, will have 8 database servers. Whereas in uh, X8 system, you will have only 2 database servers. You will have only 2 database servers. So that is the difference. Standard is this uh, X62. Okay. This is the most commonly used configuration. Very few customers. So what is the gain there? You see, the gain is you don't need many servers, right, to run your workload. You need uh, a single SMP server, a big server, which has more memory, more CPU. Okay, but you don't need many servers in the configuration. So for such kind of workload, you purchase X68 model. If you need more servers, like you are deploying a rack, right? You need to implement a four node cluster, eight node cluster like that. So here you will get more servers. And each server is modular with, uh, okay, less capacity. You don't need a big capacity on a single server. Okay, as you grow, you add more servers. Uh, yeah, see this X68 is uh, good for high-end OLTP workloads, which requires more memory, but doesn't require more servers. The regular workload can be run on X62. Initially, only X6, the 2 version was there, not 8 version. This 8 version was introduced in third generation, starting from X2. In V1, V2, you don't have this 8 model, 8 socket CPUs, 8 socket servers. Only 2 socket servers are there. Okay, it is running, it is like a car having, or aeroplane having 2 engines, and aeroplane having 8 engines. Okay, so if you want to carry bigger workload, you buy 8 engines. If you want to carry regular workloads, you buy 2 engines. And uh, as you need more, you can add more uh, servers. That is the concept. Next, we will see Exadata standard configurations. Okay. Uh, when Oracle sells Exadata racks, initially they used to sell in fixed configurations. Okay, those are called uh, standard configurations. Okay, and the standard configurations are eighth rack, quarter rack, half rack, full rack. Okay, so in the initial days, uh, till X4 actually, not even initial days, till recently. Till X4, this exadata is available in four configurations. Eighth rack configuration, quarter rack, half rack, full rack. So the difference is mentioned in this slide. The difference is 
the number of servers in each rack. Suppose if you take a full rack, full rack has maximum number of servers. Again, the servers are fixed by Oracle. The number is fixed by Oracle. In full rack, you will get four, eight database servers and uh, 14 storage servers. That is the full rack. If you order half rack, you will get four database servers and uh, seven storage servers. Whereas in quarter rack and the eighth rack, you get two database servers and three storage servers. The difference between eighth rack and quarter rack is eighth rack is half the capacity of quarter rack. For example, on a quarter rack, say if you have 100 CPUs, in eighth rack you will have half of that that is 50 CPUs. Similarly in quarter rack if you have 100 GB RAM in the 8th rack you will have half of that 50 GB RAM. Similarly in 8th rack in quarter rack if you have 100 terabytes of storage in 8th rack you will get half of that 50 terabytes of storage. In terms of servers both have the same number of servers two database servers and uh, three storage servers. And uh, initially, 8th rack was not available. 8th rack was introduced in X3 version. Okay, so before X3, you have only quarter rack, half rack, full rack. Okay, like a shirt is available in Excel, large, medium, small. Okay, so depending on your business requirements, budgetary requirements, small customers may start with 8th rack, big customers may go for full rack, right? Or today you purchased 8th rack, okay, later you can upgrade to quarter rack, once you are uh, using full capacity of the 8th rack, you need more capacity. So 8th rack can be upgraded to quarter rack, quarter rack can be upgraded to half rack, half rack can be upgraded to full rack. If full rack is full, you can interconnect multiple full racks with infinity band cabling. So that way, the system is designed for scalability. Okay? Now, so initially, Everything is almost fixed by Oracle. The number of servers, per server capacity, right? Everything. But later, things changed. Things changed. Customers are demanding Oracle. Why you are fixing everything when we are paying? Let us choose what we want. Okay? So, ultimately, Oracle has to listen to customers. So, that is where they introduced another configuration called flex configuration, elastic configuration, sorry. Elastic configuration. So in elastic configuration, the number of servers are not fixed by Oracle, like in standard configuration. Then who will fix that? It is the customer. Customer can choose how many database servers they want, how many storage servers they want in the rack. Of course, there are some rules under regulations for that. What are those rules? You can have 2 to 19 database servers per rack and uh, 3 to 18 storage servers per rack. So as long as you are okay respecting these boundaries, you are within these boundaries, you can choose your own number of database servers your own number of storage servers. For example, with the elastic configuration, a customer can choose five database servers, okay, ten storage servers. This is not available in your standard configuration, five under ten. It's not available. Okay, so that way now customers has more flexibility. 
So this concept of elastic configuration is introduced in X5 version, starting with X5. Now, next, one more configuration, one more concept is storage expansion rack. So with the storage expansion rack, you can add additional storage to the rack. Okay? So most of the time, storage is the, okay, quickly used resource, right? So as you load more data into the database, you quickly run out of the storage. So when you run out of storage, you can add additional storage. Okay? So that additional storage is available in expansion racks, storage expansion racks. So this storage expansion rack concept was introduced in X2. Earlier it was not there. Okay? And uh, again, the storage expansion racks are available in three configurations. Full rack configuration, half rack configuration, quarter rack configuration. Full rack will have 18 storage servers. Half rack will have 9 storage servers. Quarter rack will have 4 storage servers. So with the storage expansion rack, you can add additional storage to your exadata rack. So these are some more details about okay, Exadata. Now we'll see the scalability of the Exadata system. I told you Exadata system is designed for scalability and designed for high availability. Okay. So what is the scalability? As we discussed already, a customer can start a small with 8 rack configuration. Okay. So if 8 rack is full, you can upgrade to quarter rack. From quarter rack, you can go to half rack. Half rack to full rack. Full rack to multi rack. Okay. So that way, the system is scalable as per your workload. And uh, just to summarize why Exadata, okay, by now you must have understood why we need Exadata, okay. Uh, so basically Exadata is an engineered system, so which is a pre-built, pre-tested standards, okay, implemented as per the global standards and all the configurations are supportable configurations. Eliminates the complexity of deploying large database systems. Suppose you want to deploy a six node rack or an eight node rack. Okay. So you know how much time it takes. You need to purchase servers. You need to purchase a storage. Okay. And uh, install them, integrate them, test them then only you can install Oracle Rack. It may take months to there. So with Exadata, it is already there from day one. And uh, the good thing is, end of the day, Exadata runs so your standard Oracle database. Right? So whatever Oracle database you run on non-Exadata systems is run on Exadata system. Okay? So that means any application, any application uh, that runs on Oracle database can run on Exadata without any changes. There are no separate certifications required for Exadata. If your application is using Oracle database on non-Exadata, that application can use a database running on Exadata without any retesting or changes or further certification. And uh, you get extreme performance out of the box. Just now we understood the capacity of Exadata box, right? It is uh, huge uh, in terms of memory, in terms of CPU, in terms of storage. Okay? Every component is a very high-end component. Okay? And to just give you 
uh, the idea how much performance you can expect. If you are running data warehouse workloads, the typical performance improvements, okay, you can expect up to uh, minimum 10, 10 times performance improvements and uh, some customers got up to 100 times performance improvements. This is what Oracle says, okay. So minimum 10, 10 times and up to 100 times improvements. If you are running OLTP workloads, okay, uh, you can expect up to 20 times performance improvements out of the box without doing any changes to your code or any application changes. And uh, Exadata is massively parallel, scalable on demand, fault tolerant. So every component, okay, is a fault tolerant component. So if that component fails, there is no problem on your database availability. If CPU fails, if hard disk fails, if networking fails, if a complete server fails, there is no impact on your database availability. Okay? And because of huge capacity, as I told you earlier, Exadata can be used as consolidation platform. Okay? Instead of running, instead of deploying your databases on hundreds of servers, you can deploy on a single Exadata server. And this is very useful in cloud environments where you need to provision different databases for different customers. So in that case, you can reduce your floor space requirements in the data center, okay? And your overall total cost of ownership can be reduced with uh, one Exadata server instead of purchasing hundreds of different servers, okay, from different vendors and, uh, okay, coordinating with the different vendors. Single vendor support. Every component inside the Exadata, okay, is supported by Oracle. So you just contact Oracle, uh, everything is taken care by Oracle. So this is the tagline that Oracle sales uses. Exadata is best for data warehouse environments, is best for OLTP environments, best for consolidation environments. So a single box, single Exadata server, single Exadata system can be used for deploying all these, okay, data warehouse workloads, OLTP workloads and even consolidation workloads. Traditionally, uh, we used to purchase different servers for OLTP workloads, different servers for data warehouse workloads. But with Exadata, both workloads can be simultaneously run on the same server. Exadata has features for OLTP workload, features for data warehouse workload, features for consolidation workload. So depending on what you deploy, you can take advantage of those features. Okay. So, so today I will stop here. Okay. Probably tomorrow onwards we'll uh, continue further. Uh, this um, completes the basic introduction to Exadata, basic idea of Exadata, and uh, tomorrow onwards we will get into the technical details of Exadata. Slowly tomorrow onwards we will uh, uh, start uh, system practice and I will be creating VPN accounts for all the registered participants from today. So tomorrow onwards you you should uh, start okay uh, practicing on the system. The hands-ons will start slowly from tomorrow. And uh, any questions? This is the right time to clarify all the questions related to Exadata. What is that? What is this? Okay. How is this? How is that? Anything you can ask me now. <laughs>